Welcome back to another episode of Dominique Pernay's course on celestial navigation. My name is John Pinto. I'm an amateur astronomer and a mathematician, and I'll be presenting Dominique's course to you. Today we are finishing up our um, couple of episodes on star sites using something called the selected stars volume of Pub uh, 249, which is volume one. This is episode 33. We've only got one more to go. So let's get to it. Dominique's uh, full course is in, uh, presented in his book, Celestial Navigation, and the accompanying Celestial Navigation Exercise Manual. Uh, you can find out more on how to order them at marinenavigationbooks.com. Also at marinenavigationbooks.com, you can download a PDF copy of the exercise manual, which you will need to do the exercises in the course. It has all the tables and worksheets uh, in there that you're going to need. Uh, also, there will be some uh, free worksheets you can download. Um, you can even download this slide deck that this course is based upon, so you could review. So, selected stars. Uh, the concept here is that for selected stars, uh, which I'll show you what that means, and for specific boat latitude and local hour angle, HZ and ZN will be pre-calculated for you. Volume 1 is updated every five years. Uh, the latest volumes are editions called Epochs of 2020 and 2025. And they are good for nine years. Uh, that, for example, the 2025 edition, which is, I believe, the one you can purchase now, uh, is accurate from 2021 through 2029 as long as you use the special correction table number five in the back of volume one. And I'll explain at the end how to use that. So all calculation requires knowing is your UTC time of your site. Um, and of course, your latitude and longitude, uh, your DR latitude and longitude. And then from then you're going to do just like we do with all other sites, you're going to calculate a whole number LHA of Aries. Uh, you'll uh, calculate an assumed latitude, uh, which will be just your rounded off uh, DR latitude to the nearest whole number. So let's do an example. So we're going to do a site on Spica or Spica, and we'll show you why you want to do that. On June 15th at 06.28.20 UTC, and this is your DR latitude, 38 degrees, 46 minutes north. And your longitude is 130 degrees, 57 minutes west. So where will Spica be in the sky? So the first thing you're going to need to do is calculate the GHA of Aries. So you'll go into your nautical almanac. You'll look up the GHA of Aries for the 0600 hour. And you'll find that it's 353 degrees and 6.7 minutes. You go in the uh, back tables of the almanac. Uh, for uh, the increments table for 28 minutes and 20 seconds. And it'll show you in the Aries column, that's 7 degrees, 6.2 minutes. You add those two together and you get 360 degrees, 12.9 minutes. So here we go. Uh, we're going to do an assumed latitude of 39 degrees north, because that is what 38 degrees, 46 minutes north rounds to. And your longitude, you're going to pick uh, 131, 131 degrees, 12.9 minutes west, because that's the closest assumed longitude to your DR longitude that gives you the smallest whole number of, of degrees of LHA of Aries, which when you do the math comes out to 229 degrees. So now you open up volume one of pub 229, 249, sorry. And you open it up to the table for your assumed latitude, which we said was 39 degrees, which you see up here. And then you go down to your LHA of Aries that you just calculated, which was 229. And you're going to see a list of seven stars. Now, uh, it is recommended uh, that you choose the star with the little uh, marking here. It looks like, a little, looks like a little star. So we have Altair, Spica, or Spica and dub or doobie or dub, dub a, whatever you like to call that one. But we're going to focus on Spica. Now, 
<clears throat> the reason that they choose these three is because to get the best fix uh, using stars, you're going to want three stars that are approximately 128, 120 degrees uh, apart from each other in the sky. Uh, that gives you a, a, the best chance of getting a really good fix for your boat. So we're just going to show you how to do one of them, and the others are the same. Some people like to shoot all seven if they can. Remember, the amount of twilight you have uh, may be limited, so you may want to start with the three uh, marked ones, Altair, Speaker, and Dub. Uh, do those first, and then if you have time, go for the others. The other reason they give you more than just three is because uh, part of the sky might have clouds in it, or uh, it's just hard to see. Uh, so they give you other other options. So anyway, so what we notice here is at 229 degrees for LHA of Aries, Spica will be 33 degrees and 35 minutes above your horizon, and it will be in the azimuth, the direction of 213 degrees. Now what's wonderful about this, not only for calculation purposes, but it also tells you where to actually look in the sky for it. So you set your sextant, for 33 degrees, 35 minutes, uh, you get out your, your uh, hand bearing compass and you see where 213 degrees azimuth is and you point your sextant there and the bright star that'll be right in the area of where your sextant is pointing will be Spica or Spica. Now we have an exercise. And then of course you can use that uh, to compare to the uh, HO you get. Um, just as you do any other um, sextant um, calculation, um, you, get, you do all your IE and your dip, refraction, all that good stuff. You compare it to your uh, HC that you see in the um, volume one, as we just picked out, and that'll give you your intercept and your um, uh, toward or away and the azimuth you need to draw your line of position. The reason for this table, there's another reason for it, now, besides the fact that it makes it really simple, um, is because volumes two and three only uh, are designed for basically the sun, the moon, and the planets, which will be declinations zero through 30. Now the stars um, go have declinations more than that. So... Uh, what this volume takes care of is it looks at all stars, not just stars between plus and minus 30 degrees. Um, now, there are a lot of stars that are within 30 degrees of the celestial equator, plus or minus 30 degrees deck declination. Uh, but in the case that uh, you, know, you can't find a three in there um, and just do a standard site reduction, you can just use the uh, volume one uh, selected stars table. I actually find that very helpful to just, if nothing else, uh, start learning where the stars are in the sky. Okay, so here's your um, exercise for for this week. Um, you're going to make believe this is your time of sight. This is going to be your DR latitude. This is going to be a DR longitude. In the exercise manual, you go to appendix A4-1, which is our selected a page from the selected stars volume and you're going to find hz and zn for the three best stars for fix and remember the three best stars are the one that are going to be marked with that little um star above the uh the names so here's a little worksheet you can use again you can print this out from the uh, exercise manual the pdf um i will tell you that uh for this slide you can just ignore this uh, line with star names. That's that's not really supposed to be there. You're going to start with filling out your top here. You're going to fill out your UTC time. Start doing your calculation for uh, LHA of Aries, along with your sum latitude. And with that, those two pieces of information, you go into the selected stars manual, volume one of Pub 249, and you look for the three stars marked there, and very simply write down their uh, HCs and their ZNs. Now this doesn't go all the way into the plotting and all that stuff because I'm not giving you what your sextant sites were, but this at least gets you familiar with um, how to use that book. Now we did promise you 
to explain what happens if you're not in the epoch of the year of the book, right? So I just told you 2025 is the most current one. Well, if you're not in the year 2025, or even if you are in the year 2025, um, after you calculate this information and you do your um, assumed uh, line of position that you do on your, on your plotting chart, you go into table five, and in table five, I'm going to go look up mine right now, and quote number five, it's called the correction for precession and nutation. Basically just means that the HC and the ZN are calculated for a very specific date and time uh, in those nine years, uh, basically the year 2025. But the Earth wobbles a little bit, uh, and that's the precession and nutation that happens. So after you do your line of position, you look up in the uh, table number five, and it's very simple. You just find that LHA of Aries that you already calculated. You look for the closest um, latitude to where you are, and it's very simple. It's either 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, or 89 degrees. So you just find the one that's closest to you. You see where they cross. And it will tell you to adjust your line of position for a certain number of minutes. So, for example, we're in 2023 right now. And I don't pick a, uh, an LHA of, let's say, 300 degrees. And if I look and I'm uh, near uh, north 20, it says I need to adjust my line of position by 1.1 minutes in the direction of 256 degrees azimuth. So one way to do this is, like I just said, you can draw your line of position, and then you can adjust it that way. But a real simpler way, and a little cleaner on your plotting chart, is before you draw your line of position, you open up this table, you look up what the adjustment should be. And what you do is you actually adjust your assumed position on your chart. You draw a little line, you know, one this case 1.1 minutes long, which is nothing, and you draw it in the direction of 256 degrees. So your assumed position is gonna be a little bit off your um, uh, latitude, which is where you typically start your, your assumed position, just to, just a little bit. And then from that changed assumed position, draw your line of position. Um, that's really all there is to it. Um, and happy plotting, happy charting. And let's see, we have one more episode left. We're going to be uh, closing with showing you how to do a precise latitude calculation using Polaris. If you remember in a much earlier episode, we showed you an approximate latitude by Polaris. Just take a shot of the Polaris, and that's your latitude, especially if, only if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, of course. And we just showed you a, a simple way to adjust it a little bit. Um, by taking an average of uh, two sites, say a morning and an evening site of Polaris, and you uh, average those, uh, that's one way of doing your latitude. But there's actually a precise way to do it without having to take two sites. So we'll show you that in our next episode, and we'll see you soon.